What's going on guys and welcome to another Boosted Films video. You know, ever since I did the video of showing how to drop the EVO transmission, I've had quite a few requests from people kind of asking me for tips about how to get it in. And that's what this video is all about. But unfortunately, there is no silver bullet. I feel like people were looking for me to say this is exactly what you need to do. Really, this is something of trial and error. You really need to feel things out. Uh, when you're installing this transmission. But hopefully this video gives you an idea of what you need to do and maybe some of the tools you need to try and install this, especially if you're doing it by yourself. And this video does not cover everything as far as the install. I wanted to do a video that's really just about getting the transmission up and in place. It's not as much about all the accessories and bolting up the transfer case and bolting up things after the fact. This is really just what I recommend for trying to get the transmission in place and then also immediate steps after the transmission is in place, which includes like checking that throw up bearing and making sure you have a clutch pedal, doing that kind of stuff right away. So I do have other videos showing the completion of this and even the preparation part. So I recommend that you go back and watch my Evo transmission preparation video if you wanna see more about actually like installing your throw up bearing and your clutch fork and getting that all ready to go before you lift up your transmission into the car. So that's about it for my introduction. Now we'll get into the video. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our chain and we're gonna hook it in right where kind of the shifter linkage goes. There is a, a good spot that you should be able to just hook a chain in place. And after that, of course, we're gonna push our transmission uh, about as close as we can to where we want it. And then I have a cherry picker or engine hoist or whatever you wanna call it here. And I lowered that down about as close as I could and then I hooked the chain on uh, to the cherry picker and started raising it up in place. So now the dance you're really going to end up doing here a lot is just kind of twisting, moving, trying to get this in place. I used the engine hoist and that jack that's holding my engine up to my advantage as far as lowering and raising and just trying different things. So. I'm going to include a lot in this video of me kind of actually just struggling to get this in place just so you can kind of see that it does take time and that it's a bit tricky. Uh, right here I just want you to note that the radiator hose was kind of in the way a little bit so you're going to want to make sure you move that out of the way and kind of work it around your clutch fork arm. It might catch on there as well. And you probably want to note that basically I was lifting up the side of the transmission that's closer to the firewall to kind of get that transmission up above that part of the frame that it catches on. And again, little by little, I'm just kind of guiding this in place. And not only am I kind of trying to move the transmission around from the top, but I'm also trying to kind of uh, get underneath the transmission myself. I, there are a lot of times where I'm laying on the ground, kind of getting underneath the transmission. And really what the transmission needs to do here is it needs to go back more towards the firewall. And it's obviously very crooked right now. So this is basically a failed attempt at trying to get the transmission in. And I'm going to show you a bit more about it in a, in a little while. And here you can kind of see that part where it's kind of caught up on that lower part of that front subframe. So I'm going to lift it up and twist it a little bit to get it over that part. There you can see it kind of popped up a little bit. So we'll go back underneath and you can see that I got it kind of over that part of the frame. So little by little, I jacked this up in place and I moved it around. Uh, my shifter linkage did end up getting caught a little bit where that motor mount goes, the one on the driver's side of the car, the top one. The shifter linkage got caught up in there on my first attempt at getting this up. So you can see it rubbing in there right now. So it was just kind of lifting up wrong in the wrong spot. I wish I could tell you exactly how you need to do it, but there is no secret key to this. You just might have to try it again. It's kind of hard to describe really. And basically I knew I did this one wrong. From what you're gonna see here is I ended up basically popping out that wedge collar. It <laughs> popped off. I didn't have the audio recording for this, but I wish I did because I've heard other people talk about this infamous ting. And that's exactly what I heard. The wedge collar had popped off. It kind of went ting and fell down. So I was obviously a bit disappointed, but it wasn't the worst time for this to pop off because I really hadn't had the transmission fully up and in place yet. So of course, what I had to do was drop my transmission down enough out of the way. And then I put that monolock collar back in place with those wave springs. So if it does pop off, don't forget to put those wave springs back in when you, when you push it in place. 
And I didn't record that because, you know, it gets frustrating when you're doing some of this stuff. I'm not going to lie. So I didn't record that whole process. So I basically lowered it down enough to get that back in place. And then I brought the transmission back up in. And it did kind of help. I mean, now I just repositioned it a little bit better. It worked better this way. Uh, I got the transmission closer to the firewall. It kind of was coming on a bit straighter. And then I took my time. Again, I kind of lowered the engine down a bit when I could. I jacked the transmission up a bit when I could. Uh, I went underneath the car, kind of tried to twist it and turn it and line it up. Because realistically, that's part of the issue here. When you're raising it up, it's not going to directly line up, you know, kind of the way you want it to. So you're going to have to basically twist or turn that transmission to make sure kind of those bell housing bolts are going to line up. So again, jacking up the engine, lowering down the transmission, raising the transmission. I'm just kind of trying different things, taking my time, being patient as I go. But I got really close, and as you can see, or you're going to see here, I kind of just kind of slid on. I could really feel it right about here. Let's see. Right there, it just kind of slid on. It just felt right. You could feel it kind of slide in place, and basically that input shaft was sliding into the clutch, and you could, I could tell. I could just kind of feel it sliding in. And also just a side note, and I just went underneath and took a photo here, you want to make sure that your transfer case is out of the way and that anything else is kind of out of the way to keep your transmission from sliding up in place like it should. I actually had to end up moving the blocks that hold my engine up. I put some blocks between the jack and the oil pan and those blocks of wood kind of shifted a little bit and were in the way from of the transmission a little bit too. So you just kind of want to check the area make sure nothing else is preventing your transmission from sliding up in place. And hopefully you're not going to be disappointed here but I am basically going to cut uh, to the transmission being mounted flush because it was just a long process it took a while to pull it in place and it was getting dark and late and hard to film so i know excuses excuses but i'm going to talk through this as best i can and remember i'm one man one guy trying to do this by himself so now take a look at this photo from underneath the car you can see this is how close i got it before i started putting in any bolts i really wanted this flush and right up against the engine block before I put any bolts in, but I just couldn't get it to slide in. I'm not really sure why. This is really, it got so close. I mean, the bottom uh, of the transmission was really close to being made it up to the engine block. And the top was a bit further away, as you can see, as we cut back to the video, you can see kind of the top was further out. But what I ended up doing was just putting some bolts in place and then just walking them in slowly and just making sure it wasn't, going to kind of pull in out of alignment so I kind of worked my way around to kind of pull it in evenly with the bolts to pull it in place again I wish it would have just pushed flat up and gone right up against the block and then I could just put the bolts in but it didn't end up working out that way in this case and I'm going to cut back to this photo again from underneath and I want you to pay attention to this bolt this bolt is sneaky tricky uh, you want to make sure you put this bolt back in Obviously now you can see that it's tight and the engine and transmission has made it together here But I just wanted you to not forget about this bolt. It's definitely a lot easier to put in uh, Before you put your transfer case back in place. So don't forget about that short little bolt and here we go uh, again I don't really like this cut, but I'm cutting to video of it all mounted up So this next step is pretty important I think that you do it now and not wait till later it can be tempting to start putting everything back together but don't forget about that throw up bearing. You want to kind of push that throw up bearing in place and make sure it lines up and is working like it should before you go too far. Because if you have to drop this transmission again, you sure as heck would rather do it right now than after you put all the other components back in place. So here I'm just kind of showing the way that clutch fork looks. You can see it's right up against the transmission closest to the engine block. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and pull it in place so that throw up bearing pops into that wedge collar and that should feel good when it pops in place and then your clutch fork should be kind of more aligned in the center of the transmission and not just right up against that one side and next we're going to bolt our slave cylinder in and the reason we're going to do this right away is just because we want to test the clutch pedal and make sure it's working like it should and really you should be able to bolt that slave cylinder down it shouldn't really prevent you from doing anything else anyways so now is a great time to go ahead and do that so of course we're going to put those two bolts in holding the slave cylinder in place and tighten them down so we're going to go ahead and hop in the car and test out that clutch pedal you should feel that clutch pedal you know it should have some pressure on it it should feel heavy and it should be moving your clutch fork in and out like it should 
So again, I advise doing this now before you start bolting too much other stuff on because if there is some sort of issue with that throw up bearing or with that wedge collar, now is the time to test it out before you get too far along. If you have to drop that transmission again, you know, it's just going to make things a little bit simpler. So that's it. That's how I installed my transmission and put my transmission in place by myself. It's not an easy process. Honestly, I did this about 24 hours ago and my body is still sore. Um, laying on your back and doing it in your garage, it's its not that fun. So just a heads up though, I, I just wanted to show people how you can do it by yourself, you know, in your garage if you need to. But it's always good to have someone there to help you kind of lift things in place. You always want to be as safe as you can when you have something so heavy like a, a transmission, you know, hanging by a chain, by a cherry picker, by an engine hoist. So just be careful. Uh, take your time. And that's really part of this. Patience is key. I wish, you know, I kind of had a secret tip for this and tell you exactly how to do it. But th there isn't really a, a secret to it other than taking your time and, and making sure things aren't in your way and just kind of being ready to kind of move that transmission around, lift it up in place, using your muscles. Uh, that's just kind of what it takes. And just don't try to force anything too much. So that is the video. That is how I did it. Thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned in my other videos, it's hard to update this and I'm just kind of learning as I go. So I will update the video description if anything changed, if there's a big uh, change, if there was something I did wrong, look in the video description for those updates. Otherwise, comments, go ahead, comment, tell me what I did wrong or tell me what tricks you use that helped you put your transmission in place if you did it on your own car. And as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films saying thanks for watching.